uh, <laughs> lithium or lithium supplementation? Can you share your thoughts slash experiences? Um, yeah. So I, I, I think, um, the evidence that groundwater containing higher levels of lithium rather than lower levels of lithium contributing to better mental health is, you know, as good as any such data can be, which is to say not great. Um, I call it like tier two epidemiology. So the worst epidemiology in the world is people who exercise this way have this much life or people who eat this way have this much, you know, mm. disease or whatever. Like that's the worst epidemiology because you're measuring, you're trying to accurately assess inputs and outputs. So that, yeah. like that epidemiology, I just think we should stop doing that. For the most part, it's epidemiology is hypothesis generating and it, and this is an interesting observation more or less. It's an interesting yeah. hypothesis. But my, the reason I'm calling this tier two epidemiology is like one of those variables is fixed. Like the groundwater lithium concentration mm. doesn't require you no guessing. Healthy user, user yeah, there's no healthy user the bias groundwater. in who's doing that. Yeah. The only thing you're measuring is the mental health on the other side. So in other words, that's a, that's a better type of epi, just like the you know IGF one I alluded to earlier. Mm. Um, but it's actually not subtle, right? So if you look at those data, it's actually not that subtle. When you overlay like the US map of groundwater of lithium and mental health, it's a, it's a very nice association. Now, there is no doubt in my mind that you could think of other explanations for that. I mean, and that's the beauty of, you know, trying to be thoughtful about these things as well. Maybe the lithium in the groundwater is a proxy for something else. Maybe it's a proxy for education, for socioeconomic status, for weather. Like you could think of 10 other things mm -hmm. that could be about. So all of that said, at the first order, it doesn't appear that there's an obvious proxy, but there still may well be. But at the other end of the spectrum, what's the cost of the intervention of trying it out? And so I decided several years ago that um, I wanted to try taking some lithium to see if it could help stabilize my mood. Um, but, you know, that's sort of a crazy thing to do. So I did a ton of homework. Um, and, and luckily, one of my best friends, Paul Conti, who I've interviewed and will hopefully be on the podcast shortly, maybe even by the time this has come out, uh, well, that's that, that true. Do you know the order of those, Nick? Oh, sweet. All right. So you'll have you'll have already met Paul Conti by the time this comes out. Um, you know, Paul has an unbelievable experience with lithium because he is one of the few psychiatrists out there remaining who is still very comfortable using lithium in monotherapy for high risk bipolar patients. So. Usually a patient with bipolar disorder is treated with several drugs, but in some cases, some of the drugs, um, either the patients don't respond, they're recalcitrant to the drug, or um, they produce such negative side effects, uh, they can drive up you know, suicidal ideation, things like that, that you basically have to resort to just lithium. And now that's a really scary, that's about as scary a case as a, as a psychiatrist can be in because you basically have to put enough lithium in that patient to take them almost to a toxic dose without pushing them over. So I wanted to learn everything about lithium toxicity from talking with Paul. And um, this is going to sound a little crazy, but when I first started taking lithium, I actually took it at a very high dose, not the dose that someone who was taking monotherapy for bipolar would take, but I was taking about half that amount. So I was taking about 600 milligrams a day. And again, I'm I hesitate to talk about this because I know some knucklehead is going to go and take 600 milligrams of lithium a day. Let me be crystal fucking clear. If you were not under the care of a physician who is super dialed in on how to measure lithium levels, when to measure lithium levels, which lithiums you take because it comes in a bunch of forms, doing this is, is tantamount to, you know, suicide. I mean, it's complete stupidity. So with all of that said, under the most careful, closely monitored conditions that one could have, including getting lithium levels checked constantly. I spent about a year taking 600 milligrams of lithium a day um, in two doses, two different types of lithium, a slow release, a fast release. I did it as an interesting experiment and I didn't tell anyone I was doing it um, because I wanted to know if anybody else would appreciate because I'm an emotionally volatile, crazy guy. So it's like mm. th there should be a noticeable difference. And um, interestingly, the first person to notice it was my wife, which was about four months in when she was like, something's different in you. What is it? Um, again, I have no idea because, of course, by me knowing I was taking the lithium, maybe that altered my behavior. 
in the end, I decided I did not want to take mega doses of lithium because I did notice I could actually have side effects. The first side effects of, of too much lithium are nausea. Um, now, even when you're nauseous on lithium, you still don't reach the blood level that approaches the toxic levels, which makes me wonder how those poor patients who are constantly taking 900 to 1200 milligrams a day of mm. lithium are tolerating it. But I noticed whenever I traveled it, through different time zones, if I took the lithium at different times because it was being compressed, if, if I was stacking time zones flying east, I would start to get nauseous when I took it. And I was like, what the hell is that from? And I realized, oh my God, like you probably just effectively took 900 milligrams. So I was like, you know what? This is way, this is, I don't think there's enough upside. I feel a bit better on this, but I don't feel that much better that it's worth this hassle. So I just stopped it for a couple of years. And then recently, like about two years ago, I decided, I went back and looked at the data and I was like, look, if those groundwater data are correct, you don't need to be taking that much lithium to reproduce the levels. It's, we're talking 10 to 20 milligrams. And that's an, actually an over-the-counter dose. So, so that's mm -hmm. why I, I take it. Now, again, you could put this in, I, I have certain you know, things that I take that I put in the category of probably not harmful, not sure how much value I'm getting out of it. Um, this would be one of those things. Um, this is the, the penny in front of a bulldozer. Yeah, this is yeah. the two by two, right? So mm -hmm. the reward is, are you getting a penny or are you getting a Bitcoin? The risk is, are you picking this up in front? Is it like picking that thing up in front of a tricycle or a train? This to me is trying to pick up a penny, call it a dollar, <laughs> inflation. Yeah. It's picking up a dollar in front of a tricycle. Yeah. At the end of the day, hey, it's a dollar. It's a dollar more than I had before. And if, if I'm wrong, the tricycle hitting me is not a lot of work. Mm -hmm. What you never really want to do is pick up dollars in front of trains. If you are going to step in front of a train, it better be to get a, a you know, a basket of bit. Yes, on it yes yeah. exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I don't know if you, you said this, but when your wife said there's something different, she noticed something different. Did she say what it is or do you know? What was that difference? Yeah, she said you're less of an asshole. Interesting. <laughs> it wasn't subtle. <laughs> she said, I don't know how to put my finger on it. It's something about your um, assholedness has gone down. <laughs> Decreased. <laughs> okay. And then when you supplemented on, you said maybe like 10 milligrams versus 600, mm -hmm. were you do you think you're achieving the same effect? Now it's impossible to know because the very first time I did all this stuff was before I meditated and frankly, before mm -hmm. I paid attention to any of this stuff. I think I can be just as much of an asshole today as I used to be. I think the difference is I'm now so much more aware of it that I can correct my assholeness quicker. Like I can be an asshole, but then I'll snap out of it in like 20 minutes as opposed to two days. So I think now there are so many confounders that it would be impossible for me to say, has lithium made any difference in my mental health, mm. truthfully? Okay. 